Go folks! Happy holidays, happy holiday season to you and yours, whatever you celebrate, wherever you're celebrating. I hope you have a great one. Uh, there's a lot of different kind of religious beliefs and all that that have these major holidays today and cultural ceremonies, etc. So uh, not today, but this, this, this general time of year. So um, I just wish you and yours well. Uh, if it is something that you're celebrating or it's nearby, I really hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, here in Puerto Rico, they mainly celebrate uh, Christmas and uh, Three Kings Day. That's the biggest one, Three Kings Day uh, and uh, January 6th. I don't think I introduced myself. My name's Nick. This is Otto the Garden Cat, my co-star. He's been a little bit uh, feisty. He's playful, but he doesn't want me to be uh, moving him around. He's been pretty annoyed at me when I brought him out here with me. But he'll still have fun, right, bud? Anywho. Uh, we're just going to do a really quick uh, overview of what's going on here, just going to give you a couple updates. It's not going to be a very long one because i got a lot of things to do today, so let's just uh, get started. So I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to the holidays, I get kind of lazy. I don't really feel like doing my like normal required tasks that I have to do every single day. So I've been a little bit behind on the uh, rain gauges, so let's do that real quick. Um, this one is completely full, uh, right to the tip top, so that's a full inch, a full 25 mil of rain. Uh, right there and let's do ooh, the cat came running in right when I dumped that water maybe I can get him to drink it next time let's, let's see and the second one wow almost another full inch just uh, 0.95 inches 24 mil another full inch here over here Look at him. He's realizing now that it's uh, water and he's getting wet from it. Until then, he wasn't quite sure. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. Otto's now interested in our nice fresh plantain slash cooking banana harvest. Uh, we actually had a flock of grackles on this thing yesterday. I had, was sitting inside and heard a lot of commotion and came out and looked or Really, I just kind of looked through the window here and there was probably about eight grackles and they're just like small little, small little flighty birds. They stay in packs and everything and they're all over the place here, but it was kind of cool to see that uh, them coming to take a little bit of an advantage of these, uh, these ripe plantains slash cooking bananas right here. So we'll have to give some of those up, but that's all right. We'll at least get a few more. Kay's excited for the green one so she can make, uh, she likes to make tortillas, uh, the green plantains. Um, and again, I'm not 100% sure whether these are like bananas technically or plantains technically. Um, either way, they're, they're sweet, but I think they're actually a plantain type because it's not like a, like a regular eating banana. It's more like cooking. It's, it's more starchy. Um, those tend to be more kind of plantain style. So we don't really know. Uh, the leaves see, appear to make it seem like it would be a, uh, a, a plantain. Uh, because let me show you real quick. I need to cut this down anyway. Hopefully, see. If, I don't know if I'll do that with you guys today or if I'll do that later. But you see how the leaf up there kind of closes off, and here it starts open, but it kind of closes off as it goes up the leaf a little bit. Um, that tends to be indicative of a plantain variety versus a uh, banana variety. But again, that one's like kind of half closed, half open. That's why I'm a little confused about it. Usually the plantains are like really closed and it's absolutely, this is a closed leaf thing. And that's uh, a really good indication that it is indeed the plantain. And also plantains usually have some sort of kind of reddish streaks. Actually, let's just really quickly go down and look at this. Uh, I know these two down here are plantains because the guy who gave it to me brought it from his house and they were from a, a baby from a plantain tree. So, um, this will probably be a good example here. So let's take a look up here. You see how the leaf is kind of closing on itself? It's open at the bottom there. It's still open at the bottom, but it closes up as you go up the leaf a little bit. You see that? And also has that kind of red tinge. That's pretty off. That's pretty frequent that I see with plantains, at least here in Puerto Rico, the ones that are around here. So you can see here, it's a little bit open here, but then as I get up here closed, it's it's really closed. So that's just a really basic way of Determining whether it's a banana or a plantain, a banana is going to be just completely open like that. It's not going to have that kind of closure at all. This is Cat. He wants to play a little bit. He wants to play. He wants to play. You good kitty. You good kitty. He loves it right in here. This is his favorite spot in the garden. <laughs> right there. Otto's been enjoying having us home 
uh, for the holidays. Uh, one of my childhood friends, uh, when I lived here as a kid in Puerto Rico, one of my childhood friends uh, who, who was like one of my best friends here, she's home for the holidays, so I've been spending a lot of time with her and her, uh, and her fiance. So that's been really nice to be able to see, you know, family friends that you haven't seen for a while and, and catch up and all that. So that's been really nice. But what that meant is I haven't done much back here, like at all. Um, you know, I come out every day, I check on the chickens. I'm doing all the, like the regular things I need to do on a daily basis, for sure. That's an easy, yes, I've turned the compost pile once or twice, I think in the past week. Um, but I haven't like been spending a lot of time doing big projects and everything, just because it's the holidays, you know, and I wanted to have some time just to relax and some time to spend with family and everything. So um, apologies for not getting more videos out the past week. I think I missed one completely last week, but that's the reason. It's just because um, I'm, I'm trying to enjoy the time that we have with the family and friends while they're here um, in town and, and on, on the island because, you know, it's kind of hard for that. So and also, you know, holiday season, everyone just wants to kind of cozy up a little bit. So I've been a little bit lazy too. So I'm not going to say that, but really the thing is it's overcoming the laziness to get back out there that's that's kind of like the the lesson and the and the challenge that i set for myself all the time obviously i need to set more for myself because i haven't been out here too much but uh yesterday i just came out i didn't really want to come out at all um and instead of trying to do a lot of major tasks and everything you know what i did i just i just cut all the grass so um you can see otto's in some freshly cut grass down here he's been just following me around all morning but all this is just freshly cut. It was actually quite long, um, all the grass up here. I mean, long, it, you know, probably this long or longer. Um, it wasn't like crazy, crazy long, but I haven't cut it, I think, in like two or three weeks. So it's just one of those tasks that needed to get done. And so I just came out here, spent a couple hours, took my time and did that. I, I used that grass to uh, help seed um, this area down below the chickens where it's really starting to get... Uh, bare soil and everything so i use it as a mulch but the the seeds that are mixed in with all the grass uh all the grass clippings and everything will hopefully help repopulate this area down here with some grass and everything so um it kind of starts here here comes the cat just sprinting down because he knows i'm coming down here um but i basically just threw it all here a very light mulch you can see where all this fresh green is um all the way down through there and even underneath that little thing there. So all that right there, this all got torn up when I started to build this bed. And then we ended up having a lot of rain and then the chickens came down and I walked. And so we just kind of destroyed some of the, uh, some of the grass down here. So uh, right now it looks all green because all of this area right here, this is all just kind of a light mulch of the freshly cut grass. It'll end up turning brown, but I'm just hoping that the weed, that any seeds in there, like the grass seed or any other seeds that uh, were in that mix uh, end up taking and then repopulating. So I haven't been letting the chickens out too much frequently because of that. It's A, been so wet that uh, having them down there all the time is actually having them rip up the soil more and more and more. And I really need to protect that and give it some time to recover. Um, so the chickens haven't been able to get out too much recently, although they did get out on, uh, uh, I think the day before Christmas or, or maybe Christmas morning. I can't remember, honestly. Um, they had a nice little dust bath. I actually posted it on social media, but I'll leave it, I'll put it right above here now. Um, or cut to it now just so you can take a look at it. It's, uh, it's always fun to see the chickens enjoying their dust bath and clearly they needed it. And I think that same day while they were doing their dust bath, I turned the compost pile. Um, so it would basically... Let's go in and take a look at the compost pot real quick. Let me just grab the chicken food. Almost out, I need new chicken feed. Even more to do. I've been slacking. All right, now into the chickens. How's everyone doing in here? Everyone seems to be pretty active. This mom over here. And Henry down there. Henry, as we've determined, is a uh, hen. If you want to see the kind of gender reveal video, just, just some for a joke and for fun for you guys. Um, that was, uh, I'll link that video above, the little gender reveal we did. But Henry, you've been laying eggs for us, so you must be a hen or you're a rooster that learned how to uh, lay eggs. It's a very, it's a conundrum because this hen was also making rooster calls. And I was kind of convinced that it was a rooster, but now that she's laying eggs, I guess I can't really uh, think that anymore unless she... He learned how to lay eggs, who knows? Uh, as you can see down there, there is a compost pile, but it's quite spread out. We'll talk about this, that just a minute. Let me just put this food in here. See, mama's getting a head start here for me. She doesn't want to wait. Hey, mama. I know.
All right, let's head down to the compost here. You can see uh, what is the compost pile is actually just a very huge spread out uh, mass of organic material. Uh, it starts right about here and it goes all the way down to just below them and around here. So this thing used to be about, you know, three feet tall or so. Um, and the chickens basically spread out over the past three days or so. Um, I think they actually had it completely spread out in about a day, day and a half. They're pretty impressive when it comes to compost. They really love to get in there with the compost and, and uh, just go to town. They, they really love looking for the critters in there and everything. But uh, at this point in the compost pile, we're in like the maturation phase, so basically the phase where the fungi start to take over a little bit more, where they have some time to really start sending out their hyphae, grow through there, um, and basically add to the fungal content of the, com of the compost pile. So um, leaving it spread out like this, it's not going to uh, promote a lot of huge growth because it doesn't have that thermal mass that it could actually produce and get nice and hot and everything in the center. But leaving it like this for a while, the chickens will continue to scratch through it and everything. And it's, it's giving the fungi a chance to really grow and get in here. Um, so I'm just going to take a quick little handful of this to show you guys. You can see I, I instantly moved that and then I took a little uh, thing there and, and Henry started looking pretty intently. So this is where we're at so far with the compost. Um, it's doing really well actually. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it start, it's a little bit sticky, but it's still at that good moisture content. It's not too wet. It's not too dry. Uh, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, at this point, it smells pretty, pretty much like forest floor. It has that humic acid smell, and that's what I'm looking for in the compost pile um, because that's basically telling me that the fungi are starting to take over, um, at least take over more, more so. Um, this has like a, as a dark brown color. It's not quite black. I know it's kind of hard to see the exact color um, on the camera. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being pecked at back here. Mama, please stop pecking at me, please. She's pecking at me and it's hurting. Do you want to come over here? Come here, Mama. Mama, I think, wants to cuddle me. This is her thing. She's a, she's a cuddler. She wants to come in and, and just give a little bit of cuddles. She likes her little pets and her, to reach her neck around my, around my leg there. I don't really know why. This is just one of her things. This is what she's done since a, since a little baby chick. She's always wanted to look kind of like with me like this. So uh, I just give her, the, give her her moment so she can feel like she's loved and has everything she needs. And then we can move on with the vlog because otherwise she's pecking me in the back the whole time I'm trying to talk to you and it hurts because she usually does straight in the back. She's not, not an easy peck. It's a hard peck. Like, hey, hey, I want my cuddles, you know? What I was trying to tell you guys is that as the humic acids, as the fungi grow, more and more humic acids are kind of created just naturally through the process of decomposition, etc. Um, and the humic acids are, are basically food for the fungi. It's also kind of a byproduct of all the de decomposition that's happening in there. So um, the more and more fungi that end up happening, the more humic acid you're going to have, and that's going to cause your compost to turn that kind of dark brown color. And that's what you're looking for. Uh, you don't want black. Black is a really good indication that you have uh, uh, anaerobic conditions, uh, things went a little bit wrong, and uh, the, the actinobacteria probably took over a little bit. Black tends to just be overall a bad color. So you don't really want black, you want dark, dark brown. Um, that's, the, that's the color you're looking for. All right, can I let you go now? I gotta keep moving here, all right? I gotta keep moving. Is that enough for you? Yeah, I know, you want more and more and more always. Anyway, let's just look at this real quick. Put this back here. Mama, look, look, look. There you go, look. Pretend that I'm, see? I'm trying to help you here. You look now. So you can see these guys are super interested in the compost. They're like, this is their main thing. They're looking all through this compost. That's the reason it's all spread out down here. Chickens are scratchers. They like to scratch around, look for little critters in the compost pile, in the soil, etc. So what's happening here is um, I'm turning this up. She's like, ooh, I wonder if there's something delicious in here that I can eat. And she's constantly, you can see, she's going to constantly watch me as I do this. This one's really into it today. You see, see how she's attacking me? I don't know why she's attacking me. What do you want? What do you want, Mama? What's going on? She still wants to cuddle. Yeah, she's coming right back in to cuddle now. She's coming right back in. See that? She just wants to be right there. 
Well, I'm gonna try to keep moving without her pecking at me too much, but so right here, this is what we're looking at. It's doing pretty well. The last time I looked at this under the microscope, uh, we started to have some fungal development uh, and that was pretty cool to see. Uh, the, the first time I looked through it about a week, week or two ago, we had no real fungal development in there. There's a couple little pieces, but not too much. Last time there was much more. I expect if I look in this now, it's gonna be even higher of a percentage of uh, fungi. All right, sorry, I had to get out of there. I was being attacked nonstop by that by, by my mama. She really wanted my attention and not for me to be digging in the compost pile. Um, what you're looking for in the compost pile is really a, a fungal bacterial ratio um, that's based on your plant's needs. So that's basically based on uh, succession, successional, the successional place of whatever plant you're trying to grow uh, during its natural phase in life, you're looking for that balance of fungi and bacteria within the soil. So uh, brassicas and those kind of crops, they'll actually like a little bit of actinobacteria, more of a bacteria dominated soil. Um, so that's just naturally their, their interrelations from in the root zone, that's what they like. Basically the smaller plants the, and, the, and the, the more basic plants, they tend to like more of a bacterial dominated soil and, a, and the more complex plants tend to like a more fungal uh, dominated soil or higher at least number in fungi than the bacteria or higher percentages. So um, there's a lot of kind of back and forth. You, it's, it's a lot to learn when you get into this kind of world, but if you think about it as like a level of succession, right? Look at this cat, completely filthy on his paws here. You see this? Look at his paws down there. Completely filthy. What are you doing, bud? What you up to? What are you doing? You getting dirty? You getting real dirty? Good boy. Look at his paw down there. It's so dirty. Look at his paw. It's so dirty. What are you doing, bud? Sorry, guys. I'm getting distracted by the cat. So I'm trying to tell you guys about the fungal to bacterial ratio. So um, typically the the uh, the the base the more simple the crop the more early in succession a crop is you know in a natural successional period in their native habitat where they would appear in the line of succession the earlier succession plants um, a weeds weeds are very very early succession they're the first thing to grow and then your things like you know your 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 salad greens your your kales that kind of stuff they'd be like the second ones to grow and then you start moving on to the more advanced kind of fruiting crops like your cucumbers tomatoes um, anything like that zucchini that kind of stuff those guys like the, the, the as you get further into the progression of succession you like more and more fungi all the way up to if you're going into a forest you want a much higher number of fungus than bacteria in your soil and that's just based on the the biomass ratio and that's something that is taught in the soil food web by elaine ingham um, that's kind of who's pioneering this whole thing so uh, but really just looking at the soils where things are growing the best and then uh, determining what the fungal to bacteria ratio is that's how they figured all that out so the rule of thumb is earlier in succession uh, more bacterial soil uh, later in succession more fungal soil so what I want is a pretty good balance uh, at about you know 0.75 uh, to 1 is what I'm really looking for so I still want a decent amount of both in there and I want all the predators that's the key the predators in the soil and the soil food web you know the things like the amoebas the protozoa the nematodes they're the ones that are eating the bacteria and the fungi and then when they poop out all their excess nutrient all the stuff that because the bacteria and fungi they're really high in nutrients right or at least the bacteria are for sure and then parts of the fungi are so when a, uh, a predator comes and eats one of those bacteria they have too much n nitrogen that they've consumed from the bacteria and they actually have to poop out or basically uh remove from their system through digestion and everything right um, they want to remove the excess nitrogen and they do that into plant and available forms and so that's what's going to give your your plants nitrogen is actually the cycling of the nutrients in the food web itself right so uh, and that goes not only for like uh, nitrogen but also for all the other various uh, nutrients that they need they get end up being attached into sugars and 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 all sorts of different long chain carbon things that they exchange in the in the rhizosphere or in the in the area in the soil where the roots interact with all of the the soil biota down there so um, that's just a really basic introduction to that that idea um, if you do want to learn more about that i check out elaine ingham soil food web courses um, i am an affiliate with that I, i'll leave a link i think in the in the description below here if you're interested if you want to check out the course and you're interested in what i'm doing you want to help the channel if you sign up for the course through my link it's a, it's a pricey course but it's really well worth it if you're really getting into composting and and uh and and management of soils uh especially in, in a bigger agricultural sense so it's just worth it take a look uh, i'll leave the link below uh in the show notes right below the uh, youtube video here if you do want to check that out 
Other than that, guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. I'm just going to show you really quickly uh, this garden down here. Crazy amounts of production. Really excited about this one. Really happy to see that. Also really happy to see that this grassy area is now nice and freshly cut. Um, just for aesthetic reasons, really. But uh, yeah, happy with this one. Excited to see this thing really start booming. This guy here, again, I harvested from all of these greens. I also harvested down from that down there in that bed for the first time for our, uh, for our Christmas dinner. I made the salad and all the greens from that salad came from our backyard and that, that salad fed about 10 to 12 people. So kind of amazing that you can have so many greens in a small backyard, small production, nothing crazy. I'm not out here like every single day. I'm not like a huge farmer guy. I'm just a guy in the backyard growing veggies and I'm able to provide a full salad for 10 to 12 people from one harvest um, and that's pretty exciting to me and anyone can do that anyone can learn how to do that and that's what I'm trying to do to help you guys see that it's possible so you can start taking it on and doing it yourself so hope you guys enjoyed that that's it for me today if you do like what I'm doing please subscribe to the channel or uh, or share one of the videos if you have a specific video re you really like or, or if you found this one entertaining or anything like that please share a video it helps me get the word out there a little bit also like the channel like the videos all that kind of stuff really helps me basically get the word out to more people so i really appreciate that um and uh, anything i can do for you leave questions below and anything like that i'm happy to help and uh until next time have a good one <laughs>